uh, dunk that I'm sure you guys will be familiar with and hyped about. Uh, the Nike Dunk Biotech. This is a big shoe for anyone that's a big um, Dunk fan. Obviously, somebody that's... You know what the, you know what the Biotech reminds me of? It reminds me of the heady days of like Tokyo street fashion. I'm gonna, let me see if I can find a flipping image of somebody wearing them. Uh, Biotech Dunk. Uh, Tokyo street style. Let's see if I can find somebody wearing it, like an old school magazine picture, because they, they were the best. They were the, some of the best um, versions you see somebody wearing a Viatech Dunk. They just looked incredible. Uh, so I can find them now. Tokyo street style. No, no, no. Oh, look at the Atmos MX One. I had that. Didn't I? Sh quit selling that. Where is it? Any images of that? Probably not in it. Probably gonna have to go on something else and double check that. Let's see if I can find it. Launches hand on. Let's see. Tokyo Street Style, right? Mm -mm. Okay, it's Arena, right? Tokyo Street Style, uh, Nike Dunk. Let's see if someone's got a dunk on. Let's see what they look like. Cause that's that that reminds me of a uh, old school era. Where are they? Anyway, let's back in the back to the Viotech Dunk news. Um, yeah, this is the this was the site I remember always used to having to go on. Do you remember checking this site out? Uh, uh, stylearena.jp you'd go in different areas and check people's um, outfits and what they're wearing and stuff you know what, what areas you got he got Harajuku you got Shibuya you got Omo Tesando Omo Tesando uh, Daka, Dakanyama Ginza all these different areas you can definitely click on and check out but yeah let's go back to the Viotex so the Viotex dunks are coming out when are they due to come out um where to buy 10 a.m blah, blah blah release date 10th of december okay so they're coming up really soon so definitely keep an eye out for those if you want them um official images of nike dunk low biotech look at that that's a fucking beautiful shoe uh texas the following re re very few sneak releases earn a distinction of being cult classics let alone being popular in the first place this the dunk uh biotech dunk however are the extremely rare exception as they garnered an inside only following on the two separate occasions. The first came in the earlier part of the decade after the Nike dropped these overly colored dunks in Japan. As the sneaker factors grew to feverishly hunt them down, the low top retro basketball shoe. Oh yeah, I just remember. I remember you couldn't get a pair of these over a size 10 or something. I remember when they first dropped. I think that was probably why, because it was Japanese exclusive. And then by the time they re-released, they just went bananas. Um, the second wave arrived thanks to Virgil Abloh as an off-white founder and Louis Vuitton figurehead put all the new generation onto a silhouette via subtle and possibly strategic placement on his Instagram. It seems the swoosh has been paying attention to the murmurs on the streets because of Vitex Dunk are making his third overlap release on December 2010 on Sneakers app. So... I guess Virgil wearing a pair of Vi Vitex Dunks probably helped them come back in. I don't think anything is done by chance. If you know anything about Nike marketing, you know that it's all quite strategic. Um, so if the fact that they allowed Vi Virgil to wear a pair probably meant that they were already going to release them for a while. It wasn't just him wearing a pair of retros. And I think it, it ties in with his, obviously, he's doing another off. He's doing an over, another collaboration with Nike, isn't it, right? Not the Futurist, but I'm pretty sure he's going to wear... I'm pretty sure he's had on a pair of Dunk Kai's before that he's going to try and debut. But I think this is the image of him wearing them. I think, I don't know when this was, but I remember him posting this on Instagram a while back of him wearing a pair of Viotech Dunks here. And this image, as you can see, but I'm pretty sure he's got a pair of Dunk SBs, high SBs coming out in a while ago, right? He's got, yeah, this picture here of them, him wearing a pair of, um, is it Michigan's or something? Are they Michigan's? Do you remember this pack that came out ages ago? Like, yeah, Michigan, yeah. Michigan Dunk SB highs from back in the day. He's got another pair of them. Are they leather as well? Or is that suede? Yeah, he's done leather too. So the, the, the shape should be a lot better too. And then of course, the Viatech ties in with this Nike MX90 Viatech that came out a while back, um, which I'm sure people were pumped on. I'm surprised it, it didn't do as well on resale sites. It's a really nice colorway. But maybe people are not that hot on um, Nike MX 90s. But yeah, this dunk is coming out too, right? The collaboration he's got with Futura, which looks incredible. But yeah, the Viotech dunk, going back to this article, um, it's coming out at select retailers and Nike Lab. Um, the date is the 10th of December. They're going to price $120. But yeah, an absolute classic. Again, one of the... One this other this shoe is also reminds me of an era where I remember um, on Crooked Tongues there was a guy called I forgot his name but he was a like a little short white dude I think he works at Converse now he did a custom of a Nike Dunk that he painted and he basically painted them in Viotech colors but then essentially he flipped the other the other the right shoe the other way inverse so instead of it being a, a red toe box it'll be blue and this bit will be red like he just flipped the colors like you know inverted them and they look banging 
He just like really, really cool. Um, and you don't see that off happen too often. But yeah, an absolutely classic shoe. Again, in a classic dunky sh- dunk sh- dunk low shape. No need for a fat tongue. So you don't get that gargantuan sort of forefoot. And um, you just get a nice sleek silhouette. And again, just really comfortable shoe. Um, much more comfortable as a silhouette than a bloody Jordan 1 or whatever. Maybe less pointy, a little bit more boxy in a toe box. So for someone like myself that's got fat feet, it's going to work perfectly for, perfectly for me. And again, just a really perfect, versatile shoe. As proven by this picture of Virgil wearing them, right? What's he got on? He's got a pair of, like, what? Combat trousers? Army pants, whatever he's got on wearing them, right? Where is it? Where's that image? It's on here. We just saw here a while back. What was it? Yeah, he's wearing a pair of, like, you know, army type shoes or the fitness one right yeah some combat show they look fairly good wearing you know those kind of pants and i think some normal trousers would work pretty well with them too i wish i could find a picture of somebody like a old school from just japan era so i can find it japan dunk biotech so i can find somebody wearing them because that was a good era man that street style seeing people wear them like especially shop style style where like I would probably have them in magazine I have here. They're sort of like um, my Asani and that sort of stuff, but it'd be difficult to find it right now on Q. But that was a oh, that was a good era, man. What a good, good era of sneakers from back in the day. Can I find them? Anyone got a picture? Nah. No one's got a picture here. What's this? Nike Duck Low Launches. Okay, there's there's a little image here of people wearing. I don't know who these people are, but there's an image of, um, of these cool individuals wearing a pair of Viotech Dunks here that stood up together again even just through this dude's outfit there you can tell how good they look versatility in terms of outfit he's got a pair of black pants on some patchwork type bomber jacket it looks fairly decent there this guy's got some digi camo pants on right looking no some tree bark sort of looking joggers on and i think the girl at the back probably has some jeans on as well so yeah they look fairly cool in in most of the different sort of street style pictures you've seen and even just the mx90 is a good example right they look fairly decent with just black pants on so they will look pretty cool once they come out i'm interested to see how people uh drop these actually but one definitely one of my favorites again it's going to be a big year for dunks it seems like next year isn't it we're going to see a lot of dunks a lot of iterations of what is the jordan one 35th anniversary so a lot of dunks as well so it's going to be absolutely packed so definitely keep an eye on that yeah here's another edition i think this is from end right that's a good 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 hood okay let's check the good hood pictures from them is this from a good hood issue? So they're launching these as well. So that should be cool. Good hood launch. Oh, okay. The time is gonna okay for twelve hours. So they're gonna the, the raffle is gonna close very soon for these. Um, who are these people from Bone Soda? Um, they are debuting the shoe, and they look they look great here, innit? No, they look fucking banging. White pants, pair of black pants. It all looks really, really good. Again, a classic dunk. I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed that they haven't relaced them. This is the thing that just pisses me off about sneaker, um, you know, pictures and stuff and lifestyle images. Relace the shoes, man. Over, under, over, under. The way they laced it, it dropped. It's just horrendous. But again, innit? these guys won't care. They're probably going more seated anyway. So they're probably telling me to go and fuck myself. So, which, you know, which is fair. <laughs> but they look fucking cool. I love that shoe. Um, yeah, 12 hours to go and uh, what was this at on the Good Hood store? So definitely check them out if you're that way inclined. But definitely a classic, in my opinion. One of my favorite shoes out there going. A sick, sick collab, man. A sick, well, collab, a sick retro from Nike and something. Again, like I said, it definitely shows that it's a big year for um, Dunks. It's going to be a big year for Dunks, a big year for Jordan 1. So if you don't like those shoes and you hate them, I think now's the time to bury your head somewhere in the sand because you're going to see a lot of them in the next few months or so. Um, let's carry on. Or I have to duck out. What else do we have here? Oh, actually, you know what? Let's talk about his, my history of dunks. I put a, li- I put a list on here, right? What was that? Um, okay, this is a little article from Sneaker News that goes through some of the other gems from the whole dunky era that I feel you guys are familiar with. This is uh, what the dunk. Here are some forgotten Nike dunk load gems from the past. Um, so this is the following one of the big catalysts of the sneakerhead collector craze in the very early 2000s was a dunk low yeah that was do you remember seeing people's do you remember do you remember dame dash's collection of dunks oh fucking hell let's check that when someone found them in a storage unit um dame dash nike dunk collection let's see if i can find that image someone someone had a storage of basically all of dame dash's old shoes and it had like some insane sbs and shit do you remember that yeah this is it right and it has some legit, some legit fire in here, bruv. Some legit fire. That was the one. Someone found his stuff in storage. I think he didn't really want it. And he ended up just reselling the whole thing. It's probably worth, I don't know, maybe half a mil. 
in value. I think there might have been some Heineken dunks in there as well. So, and if you know anything about Heineken hunks, Heineken, Heineken hunks, Heineken dunks, sorry, you know that they go for a lot of money. So let's see, right? So let's. This is the image from what's that? Hip Hop Wired. Dame Dash auctioning off his massive. It didn't. It's not him auctioning it. I think if you listen to his interviews, I think he said something along the lines of it was his old storage unit. He didn't pay the. He didn't keep up with the payments. So that usually after a period of time when you've been warned, and maybe he changed the dress, he didn't get the mail. And essentially whoever owns the building just takes your things, and just auctions them off to kind of get back the money they've lost out on them. And sometimes, you know, it's full of shit, but other occasions it can be like, you know, a warehouse full of this stuff, plaques and stuff and all this other mad shit. He just completely gave up. So yeah, you've got some crazy shit in there. Like you've got some preem dunks, undefeated dunks, like just some nutty stuff in that collection. Like stuff that would easily get you, I don't know, 30 grand without even blinking. Especially in this era of kids who don't really know that much about old school sneakers. And you put those up on like, you know, on StockX, they'll go for P. So yeah, loads of good stuff on there as well. Let me see if I can just find an image of them all together. I'm not sure if I can find them here, but there was loads of, loads of, loads of shoes on there that I thought were just banging. It's got those Air Force Ones in the front there that I like. Another day, some, just some banging shoes all together man like wow 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 but yeah that was a good era for dunks but let's go back to the list um early 2000s through simply searching through nike talk and ebay simply because nike was putting out some of the hot gr goodness uh today nike revealed that their free code of g iterations of nike dunk clothes by by pascal bench with japanese sneaker boutiques conjure up the fun memories of almost two decades ago so here's a quick rundown of the best dunk clothes iterations ever number one they've got splatter dunk um designed by california-based artists undefeated uh they've got silver surfers they've got these are yankees which is one of my favorites and again that was a real good favorite in terms of a air force one colorway there's a similar one here in a dame dash collection which you can just see above there the same sort of colorway the yankees sort of colorway similar but not the same right sort of like inversed um, I thought that was a big shoe. Um, then you've got the um, the Argon two tone dunks were all the rage, and none were fresh as the Argon, featuring two refreshing shades of blue. Argon dunks, a Japanese exclusive release. Like all the code JP Japanese, um, all the code JP stuff was so good. Probably the best you've seen. Of course, you got the Eric Hayes dunk lows that were another big one. Um, you got the Curries. Oh, the Aloha's. I had a pair of these. Oh my God, man. Some memories of these coming up. Um, Ultraman, I didn't have those. I had the denims. I didn't have the Halloweens. I didn't have the dirty denims. I didn't have the city attacks. I had the Sambas. Mama mia, that's a good era, man. Samba, like many other dunks in the past. Samba dunk 2009 was a Japan exclusive. Like, look at that colorway. All these colorways, right, would be such a cool thing to flip on an Air Force One if you went to an ID. Like some of these are some fresh colors ways to do on a, a Nike ID or something like that would look so good on Air Force One. Even Air Force One may be high actually with the, with the nylon strap. They look perfect with them. So yeah, it's definitely the year of the, it's definitely going to be the year of the dunks um, next year. So definitely um, try and get yourself a pair or try and get involved now. But the, I've seen quite a few on eBay that go for a pretty decent price. So if you're, if you're not that bothered about, if you're, if you're, if you're not that keen on them, then definitely check those out. Um, my number one dunk I think of all time high if I had to choose is definitely the Pharrell dunk high like one of my favorite cut of course I'm a sucker for black uppers anyway but I just think a combination of it being a translucent icy sole the NRD logo on the side uh, the silver swoosh the red laces just an absolutely epic epic shoe and if they still go for a pretty penny online now um, this is from sneaker news it says the following, before the Air Yeezy became the official signature shoe for the non-athlete hip-hop celebrity, Nike doubled in collaborations with an impressive list of hip-hop influential people. Uh, Pharrell and Nerd deserved a good chunk of credit for bringing in a fresh alternative sound to the genre, conveniently defined by perpetual beats and, and whatever. They, oh, commonly referred to as a dunk loaf, dunk high, sorry, Pharrell. These limited edition dunks were actually a collaboration with NERD as a whole. And it features the NERD logo em embroidered on the thread, a tone of black upper. Just 100, just 1,050 were individually numbered pairs exist. Released in 2004 at select um, Nike stores, um, Currently, the floor dance command at least $700 on a sneaker market. And due to the rarity and the steam nature of the collaboration, the number isn't likely to dip yet. Because all the people that actually had these wore them. It was one of those collaborations, like similar to Tom Sachs, like the Nike Mars Yards. Like there's there's a couple of shoes that come out. Like I look at the, you know, the Sean with Wotherspoons, Air Max 1s, 97 sort of hybrid thing. There's a few shoes when they come out, people actually wear them. So it's quite hard to get like an actual brand new pair of shoes. 
um, from that era because people wore theirs into the ground. And some of the bigger sizes, weren't, especially the one the size I have, like a size 10, were the ones that tend to get worn the most. You have a smaller size, people might have them in their archive, have them in their collection, but a size like mine is nearly impossible to find an actual brand new pair. Um, but yeah, an absolutely brilliant shoe, man. It's just beautiful. What is like a kind of like a, was that like a tumbled leather upper or a, I don't know what that what that is. Sort of like a a fake embossed fake, like a flake lizard skin. I don't know what that is. It's just beautiful shoe, like one of my favorites. And then lastly, the other shoe that I thought was one of my favorite dunks as well during that era was these bad boys. I can find them and get this off the screen. Save some RAM. But this is my other favorite. Do you remember these the the undefeated dunk highs, the NLs, the non 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 lean non like no lining non linear whatever it's called. This is a classic man. Bloody hell. I remember having these from Foot Patrol. So, Classic Revisited from Sneakers again. Undefeated in Nike Dunk High NL 2005. Again, that colorway nowadays would absolutely cause riots on the streets. Back then, imagine what that must have been like. But imagine now where people want to wear just crazy colorways and stuff. And again, just a like, just as clever. I'm not sure what the inspiration of it was. Maybe we find it in the text, but just the color placement is just beautiful. The choice of material is just fucking gorgeous. Even the fact that it's got like a black stitching on the midsole here. Um, on this sort of like light lime green midsole bit is a really cool contrast. I love everything about it. So this is text from the following. We started with a firm Posits 1 and continued with MX1 for the third week. We're focusing on another sneaker model that deserves a lot of credit in Nike Dunk High from 86. The Dunk High considered to be... Da, da, da. Let's see what the text is. Come on, let's see. In 2005, Undefeated teamed up with Nike on a Dunk High slimmer NL form. The Dunk NL stood for a non-liner, which features an interior stripped of its thick padding and achieved a sleeker profile. Yep, I love that. A precursor to the current deconstructed Dunk Highs. Undefeated in an uninhibited um, use of bright colors was match perfectly with the supreme materials on the shoe which in features a highly quality brown leather on the toe which i think is similar to maybe the curry dunks right that sort of leather remember the curry dunks um they kind of wore those in and they kind of gave you a little bit and some nice creases and shit and when you put some um, leather ointment in it they buffed up really nice too um some high quality brown leather on the toe a wine colored heel a calfskin leather used on a toe box and tongue bloody hell this 2000 piece masterpiece was a tier zero release and limited to just 5,000 units bloody hell man i didn't know it was that limited so again that was just the sneak industry a lot of this stuff was just like supply and demand right there was only i don't know uh, probably 20,000 or 100,000 sneakerheads worldwide now there's probably a million because everyone essentially that buys Yeezys is essentially a sneakerhead right so it's, it's a lot more competition out there for shoes and even just for customers isn't it um the dunk uh, the, the, the 5,000 units worldwide and surely stands as the definitive dunk of our time rife with colorways and materials and seemingly adapting the NL construction without shedding the dunks original heritage of basketball um Keep this classic colorway and below and brace yourself for another week of all-time greats here on the classic review to be yeah definitely one of my favorite dunks man an absolutely boss kind of color placement again they're not the most comfortable shoe in the world the sizing was a bit weird because again there's no lining no padding so you have to really be careful on the sizing that you got if you were size up if you went don't order size up order your true your true size because after a period of time they do kind of end up you know um relaxing a bit and getting a little bit wider especially on a four foot but just in terms of colorways used Maybe one of my favorite collaborations, maybe to date. Again, one of the best um, from that era, man. So definitely check that out if you're that way inclined. Definitely um, available probably now on StockX and stuff. I wonder what, how much they go for actually on StockX. Probably a big chunk of money, no? Let's see if we can find those on StockX. See how much they go for. I'm gonna say about five. Is the if the if the Pharrell Dunk is seven hundred, they have to be less than that, right? Because the Pharrells are probably a little bit more hyped than these. These don't have they don't have any sort of embellishment to tell you they're undefeated dunk highs. There's nothing on there, right? It's just I'm pretty sure. Let me see if I can find it. Nike Dunk, uh, Nike Dunk NL. Where is it? Oh, it's not there. Well, why is it not there? Nike Dunk undefeated. There we go. How much did he's got for? Oh yeah, okay, that's not too bad, isn't it? Seven, three hundred, three hundred eighty quid for my size, especially. Or is it all sizes? I'm not signing in, am I? Okay, so let's see if you all ask us. Uh, let's get this screen up so no one can see my username. Let's log in here. Okay, size eight is three eighty. What's what's my size gonna be? Probably about what four hundred, maybe, which is not too bad if you can, if all things considered, isn't it? Considering you're gonna get like a one-off shoe that not a lot of people have. I think that's a pretty fair price to pay, in my opinion. I'd be well up for that. 
Oh, ho, ho. my my shoe, my my size is a thousand pounds, so they're worth more than the Pharrell Dunks. That is insane, isn't it? Mama mia! So let's see what the all the prices are saying here. Jesus, look at that, a thousand quid in my size. That's nuts. Let's see what you would ask. So it's size eleven, eight six, eight sixty is the ox price. Wow, that's a lot, isn't it? That is a lot, but yeah. It's a big shoe though. It's a bloody big shoe. And de definitely something that a lot, a lot of people would have. Definitely a one-off. You wear these on the red carpet. People will be busting their heads open. You know what I mean? Even just on a good street star pick, people will be going crazy about these. You, you know, you could probably match these up really nice with a, a couple of good Dreams Van Noten shirts. You know, if you're that way. If you're, if you're a Matching McPherson type of dude. But for somebody like myself, just putting these on and having a good outfit will just swag them out. And, you know, regardless. But yeah, definitely one of my favorites. I love it.